We are busy with a series where we are covering topics related to the New Testament. And thus far we looked at who were the Pharisees, who were the Sadducees, and today we will be looking at who were the scribes. We will look at how the term scribe developed throughout the Bible, the scribes' religious views, the scribes' duties, the scribes' respect, and finally, how Jesus responded to the scribes in the New Testament and what we can learn about that. And it's all coming up. Good day and welcome to Books of the Wise, where we talk theology, great books, and the Bible. And just so you know, much of the teaching on the scribes in this video is based on Merrill Unger's excellent Bible dictionary. This is truly a great resource to tell you more on really important topics in the Bible. And I will link this book in the description box below so you can check it out for yourself. Now, let's look at the early use of the word scribe in the Bible. The Hebrew word for scribe in the Old Testament was sofer. Initially, it meant nothing more than secretary. We see, for example, that both David and Solomon had these sophers or scribes or secretaries in 2 Samuel 8 verse 17, chapter 20 verse 25, and also in 1 Kings 4 verse 3. The scribes or secretaries' primary duties were to write the king's letters and draw up his decrees, but also to manage his finances, according to 2 Kings 12 verse 10. The scribes would therefore also be used to record down the amount of people at the census in 1 Chronicles 24 verse 6. Baruch also acted as this type of scribe or secretary to Jeremiah as he recorded the words of the book Jeremiah in Jeremiah 36 verse 26. Now in the time of Hezekiah, just before the Babylonian captivity, the words for scribe or sofer kept the meaning of secretary. For example, in Esther 3 verse 12, the king of Persia are said to have such secretaries. But it also started getting an additional meaning, referring to those who would copy the law as scribe and who would teach the law in Jeremiah 8 verse 8. You see, up to that time and for a while thereafter, the priests were the primary teachers of Israel. This was because at that stage they did not yet have the whole Bible. For long they just had Torah, the first five books of our Old Testament. A large part of the Torah contained duties most applicable to the priests. Thus it made sense for the priests to have studied and understood the Torah better than anyone else. Thus they, the priests, became the teachers. But as more and more of God's word was revealed, it became more and more sensible for the teachers to be those who would study the entire Hebrew scriptures and not just the Torah, and who spent more time in the word of God than the scribes who would hand copy it. Thus the onus of teaching people shifted from the priests to the scribes whose profession it was to hand copy and teach the word. We see, for example, this transition in the person Ezra. He was the main teacher of Israel after the Babylonian captivity and was both a priest and a scribe. See Ezra 7 verse 10. Now coming to the New Testament, the word for scribe is the Greek word grammatias, from where we get the English word grammar. By this time, the word for scribe really had two complete different meanings. On the one hand, it still had its secular usage, which was more in line with the original meaning of the word, where it was translated as secretary. For example, in Acts 19 verse 35, it is translated as town clerk, referring to the keeper and registrar of public documents. But the word scribe also had its more religious meaning, where it referred to a profession of people who did not so much copy the word, but who were employed in teaching the word and judging between cases using the Old Testament law, as well as oral law. Its New Testament synonym is lawyer, in the Greek word is nomikos, and teacher of the law, in Greek nomadidaskolos. And both of these synonyms indicate that they were experts in the Mosaic law. Now let's look at the scribes' religious views. 
most of the scribes were from the party of the Pharisees, while there were definitely also scribes who were from the parties of the Sadducees, Essenes, and probably there were even scribes from even more radical groups like the Zealots. From the scribes who were from the Pharisees, some were trained in the school of Hillel and others in the school of Shammai. These schools of the Pharisees disagreed on some applications of the law. See our video on, the, on who were the Pharisees for more insight on the different uh, schools among the Pharisees. But then it was also possible for a scribe who was a Pharisee to not belong to either the school of the Hillel or Shammai, or not to be classified as Pharisee, Sadducee, Essene or Zealot at all. You see, being a scribe was a profession, not a Jewish sect. A helpful verse to see this is found in Mark chapter 2, verse 16, where it talks about the scribes of the Pharisees, which implied there were also scribes from other religious views. Since most of the scribes belonged to the sect of the Pharisees and taught according to Pharisaic principles, Jesus addressed them together in Matthew 23 when he pronounced his seven woes on the Pharisees and scribes. Now let's look next at the scribe's duties. A scribe in the New Testament had basically two big tasks. One, they had to be a teacher of the Hebrew scriptures. They taught this primarily in the outer courts of the temple in Jerusalem and in the synagogues all over the country of Judea. Secondly, their task was to determine the application of the law to all situations of life. The scribes developed an extensive subset of the law which they used to determine whether specific actions were permitted by the law of God or not. For example, if the Torah was not explicit on a matter, then they would adhere to the teachings of the elders. If the teaching of the elders were not clear, then the scribes' word would become law in a specific situation. What made this tricky is that different scribes judge behavior from different schools of thought, and thus often the scribes from the school of Hillel judge matters differently from the scribes from the school of Shemahi. At a stage, these two schools of thought disagreed so strongly that they even later refused to worship together. Modern day Jews do the same thing. In order to determine the right halakha, which is walk of life, for modern day things like using an escalator or working on the, doing some things on the Sabbath, they first look at the Torah, then to the Talmud, which is the traditions of the elders pinned down, and then to the teachings of Hillel, then to the teachings of Shamahi, and then they go and ask their local Jewish scribe or one of, over the internet. And all of this is to determine whether or not a certain action is permitted by the law or not. Now let's look next at the scribes' respect. Scribes were greatly respected and feared among the people of Israel. We see, for example, in Matthew 23 verse 7, that they got the title Rabbi, which means my master, just to show the respect that the people gave them. In fact, the Jews believed that the scribe was to be respected above one's own father. Thus, a scribe who lost something had to be assisted before one's own father. And if a scribe and a father would be taken into captivity, the scribe had to be redeemed before one's own father. Remember that if you are finding value from this video, then please like the video and remember to subscribe right, to our channel so that you can get more content like this. Let's first look at Jesus' response to the teaching ministry of the scribes. In Matthew 7, verse 28 to 29, we see that Jesus did not teach as the scribes did, but taught them, the people, as one who had authority. This must have been at least because Jesus exposited the scriptures, while the scribes merely quoted the other scribes. In Matthew 16, verse 6 to 12, we also see that Jesus warned the disciples to be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, meaning they had to be watched out for, the, for them acting in the role of scribe and teaching the people, since there were lots of false teaching mingled into the teachings of the scribes. 
In Matthew chapter 23, verse 3, Jesus said that the disciples should do what the scribes teach them, but not always do what they do. In other words, Jesus said thereby that the scribes did not always teach everything wrong, but that there was a big disconnect between the teachings of the scribes and their lives. Now let's look next at Jesus' response to the system where they try to apply the law to every situation in life. It seemed that Jesus did not have a problem per se with the people thinking through how one can apply the scripture to various situations of life. In fact, I think that is commendable. However, Jesus did say that they neglected weightier matters of the law, straining out the gnat and swallowing the camel. For example, they did not honor their parents, but they thought on how to tithe on even spices. They also neglected heart motives, focusing on external things only. That's why Jesus said you may not lust, even though uh, they only focused on not committing adultery. They also allowed their fleshly desires to, in some places, influence the interpretation of the law, like on honoring one's parents financially, saying that it is okay if one say that your money is korban, that is devoted to the law, then you don't have to give some money to help your older parents. They also emphasized the tradition of the elders at times above the law, and they emphasized strict obedience to the law even when certain actions went against the law's intent, like helping people by healing them on the Sabbath. Now concerning the role of judging certain cases by the Mosaic law, let's see how Jesus responded to that. In Luke 13 verse 13 to 15, we see how a man told Jesus to tell his brother to divide the inheritance between two of them, clearly expecting Jesus to take his position of judge over them. But we see from these verses that Jesus refused his role, but quickly transitioned to his role as teacher, addressing the heart motive of greed. Finally, let's look at how Jesus responded to the scribes' respect. Jesus did not fear them as the people did, but rather he did what was in line with God's will, even though the scribes would not have approved of all of his actions. Jesus also rebuked the scribes for their love of special greetings like rabbi and father, saying they have one teacher, and that is God. So question for you. Do you love to be recognized for your learnedness, esteemed position, or service towards God? What sin do you need to confess? Do you love that respect that the scribes got from the people? We really learn from how Jesus responded to the scribes to also investigate our own hearts. Does our authority come from the word of God when we teach? Jesus taught and exposited the scriptures and therefore the people knew that he taught with authority and marveled at his teachings. Yes, Jesus did have authority of his own, but it is very insightful that so often he pointed back to the scriptures, unlike the scribes who merely quoted one another. Do we quote the scriptures or do we quote other teachers or maybe commentaries to be our authority when we teach? Also, we learn from how Jesus responded to the scribes' application of the law. Do we focus on the law or are there perhaps traditions that muddle our interpretation of the law or perhaps wrong motives that causes us to interpret the law that fits our own desires. We also learn from how Jesus refused to play the role of judge and focus on his role as teacher. So often a pastor can play so many parts and neglect the, that his task is mainly to be a teacher of the word of God, to address the people on their heart motives, rather to get involved in the nitty gritty decisions of life and be people's judge. We also learn from how Jesus thought about the scribe's respect. Yes, a teacher of the law does have a certain position of honor, but Jesus did never gave them more honor than they deserved. All honor belongs to God ultimately, and even a teacher of the law and of the word should be humble knowing that God deserves all the glory. So question for you, do you love the esteemed position? Do you love it when people praise you? What sin do you need to confess? Do you need to remember and remind yourself that all honor belongs to God? So you don't become fallen, so you don't fall into the same trap as these scribes did. 
Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to our channel and remember I'll place a link to this great book in the description box below. So if you want to do your own study on historical topics, then you can do that for yourself. Please remember to check out our other videos on New Testament history, uh, including videos on the Pharisees, scribes, and soon on the Sanhedrin. Uh, also watch our playlist. Until next time, thank you for watching. God bless.